guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited for today's video because I'm here with my coach and friend, Mr. This is what I do, right? I do this for framing my face. Yeah. I'm Brian. I'm Brian Turner. <laughs> Tell them about yourself and what you do. Uh, so I'm a YouTuber. I've been on here for like seven years and I do a combination of fitness and then I do veganism and I cover like acne because I used to have really bad acne. So those are the type of contents that I do. Definitely check out his channel, you guys. I'm sure most of you guys already follow him, but I'll leave his links down below and whatnot. But I have been working with Brian for, we just did our eight week mm -hmm. check in. Um, and he has been coaching me on my macros and basically like nutrition and, and workouts and stuff like that for eight weeks now. So a lot of you guys know, um, thus far in my journey, well at my lowest weight, I was at 172 pounds. Since then I've gotten back up to about like 189. So in total I had lost 115 pounds and then gained a little bit of it back. So right now I'm kind of trying to tackle that regain and then also get down to my goal weight which is probably something around 150 I'm thinking I don't have like a specific number that kind of the number on the scale has become a lot less important the longer Absolutely. things have gone I was gonna cut it and say that for sure right yeah, yeah it totally changes do you notice that with it's a lot trivial of as you go yeah. down that number it becomes irrelevant as you look at your body and right that's yeah important. but I'm working with Brian, he's been coaching me, so I wanna talk about um, kind of what we've been doing, mm -hmm. more specifically what we implemented this week. This is the second week now of our reverse diet. Yep. My reverse diet, I'm talking about like, well, we doing this, <laughs> we're losing weight. We're we doing. are doing this, <laughs> it's a team effort. Yeah, man, it's been awesome. First of all, I just wanna say though that like having a coach, I highly recommend you guys, if you've been in a stall or even if you're not knowing where to start kind of type thing with your weight loss, definitely look into getting someone who knows what they're doing and who is there for accountability. Because the biggest thing that I've gotten out of working with you is the accountability. Mm -hmm. Because having to check in every week, I swear, like when Friday comes around, I'm like, I don't feel like doing that. And I'm like, damn, okay. Saturday comes around and you're right back at it. Like, well. It makes you think throughout the whole week that you have to report this. So, F it. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, man. You know, I'm not going to eat that thing because I have to tell <laughs> Brian at Friday and I hate that. It sucks, you guys. It freaking it's sucks. It's great. Anyway, so let's talk about kind of like what the approach was. How about when we first like started? So just to sort of assess the situation and where I was at, what my body was doing, and what led us to making the decision to implement a reverse diet. Kind of what went into right. like that decision. Totally. Yeah, so like when we started, um, all I know is what you tell me, right? So um, basically you said you hadn't been really doing too much with like a, a set plan really and yeah. you've been eating a certain amount of calories um and you hadn't really implemented like a workout plan that you were doing consistently over and over and over so basically just square one yeah right? so basically all i have to do uh, all you really can do is experiment see what happens see if it works and then adjust from there so anytime someone comes in to try to lose weight we initially start them in a deficit so we take their calories down a little bit from their maintenance which is the amount of calories that your body is burning you know each day and it wouldn't gain or lose any weight so then we tried by taking some calories out, adding in the workouts with like weights and body weight stuff so that you're getting some mus muscular stimulation and then also doing cardio so that you're getting some cardio in there too. Um, and generally that is enough to get people to start triggering uh, weight loss, especially when people have been sedentary for a long time, especially when people have a decent amount of weight to lose. Uh, it, it generally starts to come off pretty quick, albeit with a caveat of if you've been eating a very low amount of calories for a really long time. Which I had due to having weight loss surgery in 2015. We were just kind of talking about that. Mm -hmm. For two years now, I was on a very restricted diet, um, you know, right around surgery. I wasn't eating more than more than a thousand calories within definitely the first six months, um, in the first six months, less than that even. Um, but then to like a year out of surgery, I went up to probably around a thousand calories a day. So this is in a, a really pretty steep deficit, mm -hmm. right? And then I struggle with binge eating disorder. So throwing in, you know, I, having weight loss surgery doesn't like fix that problem right. whatsoever. So I was still having binges. Um, so it's very like inconsistent. It'd be really low calories. And then I would have, you know, 5,000 calories in a day, which you know, maybe not too, too bad for like someone who hasn't weight loss, weight loss surgery, but compared to what I was used to, like that's a lot. So basically I was all over the place with my caloric intake, so. Right, and, and the longer that you're in, so like the amount that you're in a deficit 
how much less you're eating than what you should be eating just to maintain your weight uh, is a factor. And then the length of time that you've been doing that deficit is a, is a factor. So either one of them can really do what I'm about to tell you. And that is that your body starts to adjust to whatever it has, right? Because your body is so good at surviving, right? And we're not made to be in this, you know, super nice world where you have food at bonds down the street <laughs> and stuff, right? So your body, when, when it starts getting less calories, it thinks that it's not going to get calories for a while. So it starts doing things to survive and it slows down your metabolism so that you can survive longer with the small amount of food that you are intaking trying to stretch your life out as long as possible and so what it does is it it slows your metabolism down with a lot of different factors but the most important one being that there's a hormone <clears throat> inside of you called leptin and this hormone's job is to uh, it's to signal your body how much body fat to utilize while in a deficit meaning that when you're eating less than your maintenance, usually your body wants to start burning fat, right, to use as that extra energy that you aren't eating. But when your leptin starts coming down, then your body stops utilizing as much fat because it thinks that you're gonna die. So it doesn't want to be burning tons of fat and making you, you know, get emaciated really quickly. So what you have to do is you gotta get that leptin hormone back up so that we can actually get results with the efforts that you're putting in. And that's where it really gets frustrating for a lot of people is because they don't realize that fact. And so they'll be eating, you know, whatever it is, a thousand calories or something, and they're seeing what fat loss happen. And then all of a sudden it stops going as fast and then it stops entirely. And so then they drop another 200 calories and another 100 calories. And then you end up doing two hours of cardio and you're eating 600 calories a day and you're not losing any weight. And you still have like 80 pounds to lose. And that's kind of like where I was at in my journey. Like I've lost 115 pounds, right? And then I'm when you continue to do the same thing and it stops working, it's like, wait a second, like what's what's going on there? Because you expect it mm -hmm. to, you know, well, okay, if you're in a deficit and you're, you're working out and you're doing, doing all the same right thing things. that has been working, right? But it's just this is kind of like we were just talking about. Like I was like, people need to know this. There's like science. I just keep on thinking like science, bitch. You know? Science, bitch. Freakman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. No, but there's so much that goes into it and a lot of times especially in a like prolonged um, you know like a large amount of weight to be lost like I feel like you gotta switch it up every once in a while for sure and it's got to be really frustrating because you're doing all the right things and then you start utilizing these kind of silly like crazier tactics to maybe trigger something to happen and nothing is working and at that point what else can you do right at least that's what I think it's got to be the mentality it's like what else is there to do mm -hmm. and that's where people will either just entirely quit and say F it, you know, and then the weight will go back up or they'll just continue trying with that crazy low calorie and that crazy cardio, just hoping that someday it'll start working and it, it just won't. It just won't. It's a real mind game. I remember also like a couple of weeks ago, just being really transparent with you guys. Um, I like the mental sort of aspect of all of it. Like when I wasn't losing weight, I remember shining, like I was restricting kind of with and I was not eating anywhere close to definitely not what you had you know targets yeah the, I wasn't hitting the targets he had set for me nor was I eating like uh, anywhere near a healthy amount of calories or what I needed to be eating and it was so weird because I've always struggled you know I've struggled with binging but never really restricting and I was like mindlessly for almost a whole week eating like I think I was only eating like four to six hundred calories mm -hmm. and then it wasn't until the check-in on that Friday where I was like oh my god like I haven't and I didn't track that whole week but and then I started to kind of think back and realize like oh my god like I've totally restricted myself this week and it's been sort of some subconscious but when I thought about it I'm like hey what like triggered me to do that it was like I really it's frustrating not right. seeing results right. you know and like so like you said it can cause people to do like crazy stuff you know right. unhealthy things which is definitely definitely not good totally yeah it's really frustrating it really is and it's also frustrating on my end because once you know this information you'll be massively empowered if you decide to use this information now what you need to do when you have a low amount of leptin is you need to raise it and then once it's raised then when you go back into dieting and eating less calories because your leptin so high your body's saying let's use fat to make up for this calories that we're not eating let's take it off the body Right, so if we get that back up, then the results will start happening for the efforts put in. So to make that happen, we utilize something called the reverse diet, which is what Morgan is doing right now. And a lot of you guys are asking her, what the yeah, heck are I you have doing? So many questions. Why are you eating more <laughs> calories? It doesn't make sense. And this is the hard part: um, is is that when I try to tell people to do, to do this, you know, people have been trying to lose weight a really long time, and I start telling them to eat more calories, and it's a mind, you know, it, it screws with you. Um, and a lot of people will 
will not go through with it, but will say that they're doing it. So they'll be like, yeah, okay, yeah, I know I'm supposed to eat more carbs, but, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to make just like 100 calories less or something like that yeah. because, you know, that'll end up helping me lose fat. It's, it's a really confusing topic when you're looking at it straightforwardly, but when you just accept the reverse diet and you actually commit to it, what happens is you can raise your leptin hormone. The way that you raise your leptin hormone is by intaking carbohydrates. So when people are using like cheat days and eating these big burgers and saying that that's like speeding up their metabolism in the middle of a diet and stuff, they're doing almost nothing for themselves except for adding a lot of extra fat and taking a couple steps backwards. You need to increase your carbohydrate intake and your total caloric intake. So um, usually we'll do something like about 100 calories every three to four days of an increase. And again, almost all of that is coming into the carbs. I'd say about 85% yeah. of that's going into the carbs and then the rest of it's being split between the proteins and fats. Um, and it usually is about a two to six week process. Now, the way that you figure it out is you go and find your TDEE, -E, your total daily energy expenditure. If you go Google that, there's a calculator, you'll put your stats in, your, your, your weight, your age, all that stuff, and it'll give you an estimated number because no one can really truly know until we've kind of you know, narrowed it down for you. But it'll give you a rough number and look at that number because I guarantee you when you do that right now, you're gonna be like, nope, that's a crazy number. Yeah. Because you're so used to eating in such a far deficit that what you actually as a human really need seems crazy to you and that is kind of crazy you know what i mean that you that you you know you don't realize how much your body actually needs because what happens when people start us, utilizing the reverse diet is that the, everything starts turning back on their metabolism starts speeding back up they feel energy they feel powerful they stop being dizzy and shaky. i felt so much better just in this past like week and a half like i again like every friday i check in with him and stuff and it's such a good that's a good thing to do even if you uh, like aren't working with a coach but just to like mentally maybe write it down journal or something like a check-in each week and then even like adjusting according to you know doing your own research and stuff adjusting accordingly to those like weekly check-ins with yourself um yeah. obviously it helps to have someone who knows what they're doing and everything but um but checking in has been such a huge thing for me like even setting aside like what he comes back you know the information he comes back at me with just writing it all out and recognizing like mm -hmm. oh i'm feeling like this i you know upped my calories so we started the reverse and stuff this week i felt so much more energy it's crazy and because you're gonna have more energy your workout's gonna be more effective so you're gonna burn more calories so in that way you're already burning more calories but really what's important is that we're bringing that leptin hormone up and after after you get close to that maintenance number is when you can kind of end that reverse. So if you're someone who's been in a far deep deficit and it's going to take a while to, um, you know, by every three to four days, raise it by 100 calories, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take maybe six weeks. It might even take longer. Depends how far of a deficit you are. But you want to get somewhere close to that maintenance number. You don't have to go all the way to it. You don't have to go above it. You can if you want to, but even reversing slightly, even reversing up a thousand calories and you're still, you know, maybe 800 calories less than your maintenance, mm -hmm. by doing that, you're going to raise your leptin hormone. And then when you go back into deficit, it's going to net more results than you were getting. Now, the the length of your reverse diet is going to make it so that you can get, get away with being on a fat loss phase for a lot longer before having to utilize a reverse diet again. So. Oh really? Okay, I didn't know that. Because you're trying to bring your leptin up, so if you if you stop here, but you know you could have gotten it to here, yeah, then you'll be able to utilize it until it gets back down to zero again, Got and it. then you okay. have to do it again. So you might as well go all the way up. The problem is, is it's scary as hell yeah, to eat a bunch dude. of food when you've been trying to lose weight, and to get that high up in calories is extremely scary. I have a client right now who has gone up in, in a reverse diet up 1,200 calories from where she was eating, and she has now been this is her first week off of the reverse back into a deficit and she's lost nine pounds it's literally it's 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 science bitch, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but i but i understand that mentally it is really hard to grasp so yeah. i would say obviously right after this video it's probably gonna be pretty scary to start utilizing i would say start googling reverse diet because there's a lot of literature about it and you can actually learn a lot more about it and feel confident going into it because her having a coach she doesn't really have to know it all the way because she's like, I put my trust in you. I believe yeah. you. And I tell her and I'm like, dude, if you just do this, it's going to work. It always does. But you just have to actually do it. Um, but if yeah. you don't have a coach, then if you research it and stuff, you can kind of get a handle around it and understand why you're doing it. 
it'll make it a lot easier for you to stick to it. Because if you try to utilize a reverse diet and you don't actually execute it and you go maybe one week, you start raising calories, the next week you lower them back down because you're feeling bad and the next week, you're gonna be doing nothing good for yourself. You're yeah. probably gonna do something bad for yourself. You have right. to commit all the way through it. I'm swearing to you, if you do that, it can help you get through a lot of those plateaus that you have been hitting before. Yeah, man. Well, yeah, guys, so that's kind of, we just started the, my reverse diet. Um, like I said, we're now second week into it. So I'm really excited to see kind of like how this goes. Obviously everything you've said, I completely trust your opinion and everything. <laughs> and it sounds like, especially hearing like, um, you know, other people that you worked with and stuff like that one girl you're just talking about. Sounds like it could be definitely beneficial. It's just something that was very, very new to me and like it feels wrong. You know, right. it, it, feel, it feels wrong, but then when you start explaining, it's like, oh my gosh, yeah, like it, it makes so much sense and I have lost so much weight. It's kind of like, it would make sense that the body would need somewhat of a reset. So that's what I'm working on, you guys. I decided that I'm going to do a weekly check-in, just like I check in with him. I'm going to check in with you guys and do a video each week, kind of just like a weigh-in, um, but also letting you know how the week went and then what we plan on doing for the following week. So like to keep me accountable for this you YouTube double accountable. situation, huh? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have ever tried reverse dieting or if it's something you're going to start looking into or anything like that. I will continue to update you guys on my journey. And I think that's all. Thanks for doing this video with of course, me, right? dude. Yeah, throw comments down there. If you have uh, you know, any confusing parts of this that you didn't understand, put it in the comments and I will help you if I can. Heck yeah, man. And again, I'll leave all of his information and stuff. And you are taking on a couple more clients and stuff, yeah. right, for coaching and stuff. O2Btrainingcamp.com. So. Yes, sir. And I'll leave all that down below. <laughs> all right, guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. Bye, bitches. <laughs> It's too creepy. It's a really creepy little doll. I can't. Is it even like a Disney movie or something? It's just a weird little. It looks. It's like a knockoff Lilo and Stitch. Yeah, right. Yeah, or like weird. a Moana. Oh, Moana! I love Moana. It's a good movie, wasn't it? Was it? A good movie. I really. I watched the whole thing through. Okay. <laughs> so much for loving it. <laughs> I love it. What's up? Here to talk about leptin. Not really. Okay, <laughs> that would be the worst way to introduce it. Okay. That sounds scary. Let's talk about leptin. Okay.